item. Uh, what are the big trends you are seeing in the financial desktop space right now? Well, the trends have been going on for a while, actually. I think when you think of, when I think about the financial desktop, I think about a Bloomberg or an Icon or a Faxet workstation. And all of those big vendors have been buying up companies and assets. So there's been a lot of consolidation in the market. And so I think one trend is there's just a lot less choice out there. Um, outside of those big vendors, uh, there's very little else. So if you want to be able to get access to data, you're probably having to kind of fend for yourself and source that data, pull it into Excel. Um, a lot of asset managers and PMs and analysts um, are having to use lots of different applications outside that. So they're using Excel or they're using their CRM platform or they're using Salesforce if they're on the sales side. So a lot of products are very kind of um, disconnected. Um, so what we're starting to see at Expiro is much more need to interconnect across those applications. And I think on the data side, a lot more data companies are trying to get their data into workflows outside of those big um, desktop products. Oh, that's so interesting. Um, where will Gen, Gen AI have the biggest impact on the investment crisis, you think? Well, Gen AI is definitely having an impact already. I think as far as the investment process is concerned, you're already seeing um, you know, productivity gains. So traditionally, a portfolio manager or an analyst would have to go out um, and read a lot of content when they're covering a company, for example, they'd have to sift through years and years of filings. They would have to keep track of um, news content. They'd have to be on earnings calls. And because of all of that, you know, an analyst maybe could only cover 10, 15, 20 companies. Gen AI already is allowing uh, those analysts to cover a lot more uh, ground. Um, so you can use Gen AI, for example, to um, read you know, quite lengthy documents like filings for you and summarize those, those documents. Um, another area of change I think we're going to see is Traditionally, um, the way that you interact with data is um, through Excel, or if you're a quant, maybe using Python and you're writing code to analyze data. And it takes quite a lot of work to get access to insights on that data. Um, we're already seeing use cases where you can basically ask a, um, a chatbot to look at some data and it will analyze it for you. So you can ask it to do certain um, regressions on the data. Um, chat GPT-4, you can show it a chart and say, make observations about that image. Um, so I'm, I think that you're going to see um, a lot more um, analytics being built into solutions that are driven the front end by a chatbot, uh, which I think is going to be very democratizing. Right. Following up on that, in the field of desktop software, how do you see AI affecting the employment landscape? So I think ultimately it's going to have a big change. So um, you know, clearly this is going to be a big productivity boost for the industry. So a lot of manual processes. So just across financial services, they reckon about 75% of activities are very manual um, and require a lot of human intervention. It's copying and pasting. It's, as they say, going through filings. And a lot of those activities will be automated. Uh, it might take a few years for that to flush through the system, but that's where a lot of the embedded AI solutions from firms like Microsoft, you know, you're going to be, instead of having a junior analyst building an investor deck for you, you, know, you as a banker will be able to basically ask um, PowerPoint to do that for you. And it will reach into all your internal data sources and, and create a beautiful deck. So I think it's going to change. Um, the role of junior people as they come into a firm, because typically they would be doing a lot of those kind of manual grunt type uh, things. Um, the software is going to enable that. I think the flip side is it's going to allow those individuals to do higher order activities sooner. So instead of them having to, you know, kind of collect a lot of information and read through documents, they're going to be able to participate, you know, more in the investment process, more in the valuation, uh, value creation process. Wow. Do you think they'll have to get more education then to be able to come into an In a way, they might need less. Um, 
So I think they're going to need to know how to use the tools. So right now, to get the most out of these Gen AI tools, you need to be able to prompt it. It's a bit like the early days of the internet. If you didn't know how to create a search phrase, you get the wrong results. Um, so Gen AI today requires a lot of what they call prompt engineering. So you have to keep asking a question and then asking for the results to be re-rendered to capture some other concept or idea. Now over time, the systems will do that prompt en engineering for you. But I do think that individuals are going to have to become much more aware of how to create uh, or to use these co-pilots or these chatbots, um, but also to know and understand the pitfalls, because the worst thing is we all rely on this stuff, and it's very important to have a human in the loop, because they will hallucinate. Uh, they might, you know, there might be some unusual outcomes because they've been trained on all of the stuff on the internet, and we know that that's not always a reliable source. That is so fascinating. Thank you so much. You're welcome.